All right, welcome everyone to chapter 19 of the ISIS papers. The, I believe it's called the Neurochemical Basis for Evil. I don't have the chapter with me up right now, but I believe that's the name of the chapter. And I wanna start by getting people's summary of the uh, chapter, start by, um, start by calling on our Warrior Swa. Um, it was very, like I said earlier, this is also one of my favorite um, chapters because um, I think evil is a very good way to describe like what's been happening, what's, what's going on you know, why people's behavior, white supremacist behavior. And no one is comfortable in just calling it what it is. This is evil behavior, you know? And I love this chapter because she defines it. You know, this is a fear system. This is an evil system. You know, it's deadly. It kills us, destroys us. So, like, I love this chapter. And I'm eternally grateful for Dr. Francis Wilson for, um, you know, writing this book. Well, that's my little um, summary. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go now. For myself, it was the biological investigation that Dr. Francis Cresswellson goes on in this chapter and how she links the lack of melanin um, skin pigmentation as a basis for lacking sensitivity as a basis for lacking empathy, and essentially at the end of it, a, a lacking of the harmonious understanding, a lack of harmony. And that leads to uh, chaos and destruction, essentially, which is evil. So my uh, interpretation and my biggest takeaway is that those who do not possess sufficient amount of melanin are and by nature, by design, by some type of force, are evil. And um, can a few of them escape that reality? Uh, that's a question I cannot answer because the few of them are not making themselves known to myself, at least. So anyone that I will create will be simply imaginary. And um, I don't want to create any imaginary people because that's not constructive. So yeah. Um, and also like the uh, the in-depth analysis on what melanin can allow one to uh, do, such as um, uh, his name is um, skipping my mind at the moment, but he was a um, a black gentleman who was able to speak to the energy fields, energy frequencies of plants. Um, having a brain fart right now, but um, I, I know the downs. So I'll be reading about it. Um, come soon. George Washington Carver, thank you so much, uh, Sister Mary. Uh, <laughs> we're kidding. But yeah, thanks so much uh, for that. And uh, yeah, feel free to share your takeaways, what stood out the most for you. Well, once again, one of my favorite chapter, chapter 19, the neurochemical basis for evil. In a nutshell, Martin, Martin Luther King said it best to ignore evil is to be an advocate of it. And, and the writer has a, the writer, the writer has a, a, you know, in other words, if I'm not consciously learning and fighting against it, I'm participating in it and I'm practicing. Um, you know, there, there's other ways to, to, to be, to, to be uh, affected by evil, by, 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 uh, you know, by omission or by commission. Um, and, it, and that's what I got from this, you know. Uh, yeah. I got a deeper, really, really a deeper, more uh, clear understanding of evil by reading this, this chapter. Excellent chapter. I didn't finish it, but... Um, Actually, I did just finish it. I don't know. It's really short. But, um, 
you can't deny her symbolism. <laughs> the story, you know, how she, she made the comparison with Ahab, uh, Ahab and um, the white whale, and how you know, that was symbolic of, of white racism and the uh, just, just, just the, uh, the rage and the anger of this whale. <laughs> So yeah, that was a that was a good that was a good take. I love so much how this chapter, um, yeah, like you talk, talked about the her breakdown of symbolism can't really be like you, you can't unsee it once once she breaks it down for you. And I love that she used this chapter to also describe the relationship between a black man and woman and gave her detailed theory of, of how it is that they should operate and why exactly it was targeted so yeah um i look forward to um our, our um, sharing of knowledge of, in this chapter are awesome thanks everyone um so to get us indoctrinated what I like about Patrick too. Oh, sorry, Maya. How she theorized that the presence of melanin, high concentration, and blacks accounted for some of the observable differences in behavior between black and white people, religious responsiveness, rhythm, emotion, responsiveness, sensitivity levels. Noting the familiar sin amongst older black people, the black and the very disputed use. If it ain't got soul, it ain't got no use. Also, I emphasize the song by James Brown. We got more so. Further, I pointed out that the most sensitive body areas are the areas most highly pigmented. That's what I liked about, I liked that when I first, you know, came across that. Yeah, uh, thank you for reading that. I was, I was actually a part of my, um, my, my notes to get through. I already got one down, thank you. So I wanted to start us off by um, reading together. Uh, so let me go ahead and bring up ISIS. And um, we're going to be reading the first page together because I feel like the first page is very symbolic and it's a great synopsis of like um, what's, uh, what's basically happened. But what happened? Like it shows you what evil is, where it comes from, and um, everything. Like in a very concise way. I don't think she's trying to be symbolic, but it could be um, badass. I think she's being straight, straightforward. Um, so let me get my uh, screen. Uh, can you guys see this? Yeah. Uh, yeah no, about Girl, chemical yeah. So um, I'll just go ahead and start by, first of all, is this close enough for people to be able to see it and read? I can see that perfect. All right, and if not, I, I know, I think Ben has a physical copy of the book and I, I think Swa has one and so does my mom have a physical copy of the book. So um, what page is that? This is on page 231. Um, so I'll oh. <laughs> first, yeah, the first paragraph and then whoever wants to uh, uh, jump in uh, please do so um, the neurochemical basis for evil the American philosopher William James has stated there is no doubt that host mindedness is inadequate as a philosophical doctrine because evil facts which it positively refuses to account for are a genuine portion of reality. And they may after all be the best key to life significance and possibly the only openers of our eyes to the deepest level of truth. The Kabbalah, which literally means tradition, is the sum of Jewish mysticism, the tradition of things divine. The book Black Bear, 
1180 AD document on the Kabbalah concerning Satan states. It teaches that there is in God a principle that is called evil and it lies in the north of God. Of, uh, it is written in Jeremiah 1 and 14. Out of the north, the evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. That is to say, all evil that comes upon all the inhabitants of the land breaks forth out of the north. And what principle is this? Is the form of the hand, one of the seven holy forms, which represent God as the original man. And it has many messengers, and all are named evil. And it is they that fling the world into guilt. For the Tobu is the north. And the Tobu means precisely the evil that confuses men until they sin. And it is the source of all man's evil impulses. Um, can someone continue on? In early Egyptian African tradition, evil was associated with Set, the brother of Oris, Os Osiris, Lord of the Perfect Black. Set eventually, eventually killed his brother Osiris and dismembered his body, which his sister wife, Isis, took okay now, now it's there helped restore to life osiris was the great egyptian god figure Set is considered the white brother in contrast the early... wait the, um present the tracy would you like to read um From In Contrast. Okay. Um, in Contrast, the early Christian religion and the Bible related evil to the fallen angel Lucifer, a word that means light and that can be construed to mean white. However, in Middle Ages, for some European, the devil <laughs> took on an appearance of a black man. <laughs> wow. With long phallus, which has been modified as the present red color figure with a long tail and a long fork. Should, should I keep going or that's it? Um, that's all I need right now. Okay, good. So, on the first page of the chapter, and you the Kabbalah. What's says, wrong with your uh, sound, Trey? What's wrong with your sound? My bad, I was muted and I was oh, coming. Was for me. Yeah, I was that's why. Yeah. No. So um the Kabbalah on page 231 is from the Kabbalah, it says that evil comes from where? The north. The north. And what to me the north means Europe. The north means Western civilization. The north means white. So I, I, I'm uh, going to go ahead and say that I believe that with, with evil came whiteness, and with whiteness came evil. With white people came evil, and with evil came white people. Um, Alex Ross said earlier in our first, um, our first um, chapter review when we were talking about Hannibal. And, and then for, in, the, in the year 417 AD, Hannibal could have um, sacked Rome. He could have sacked Rome. He could have killed uh, Roman children and women and men, much like the Romans were killing um, Egyptian children, men and women when they uh, won their battles. So he could have did that, but he didn't because Black people are not evil. Black people do not 
and historically did not do evil things. Now we have black people doing some of the most evil things that we've been trained to do evil things in the context of white supremacy. Um, because they're emulating whiteness. That's what white, the stuff that these black people are doing nowadays, white people been doing it before time. Yep. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and give more con context. So on page 232, it reads, the Crest theory of color confrontation and racism by supremacy links white unjust behavior towards people of color, black, brown, red, and yellow, to white's inability to produce melanin skin pigment and the skin melanchite. Mm -hmm. The white's numerical minority status in the world and ultimately their fear of global white genetic annihilation by the genetically dominant skin melanin producing non-white world majority are pointed out as additional reasons for white aggression towards people of color. This thesis helps me explain the evil kill or kill behaviors of the global white collective in relation to non-white people. So I really love this part because um, of course, like there is a strong need for the kill or kill or be killed mentality because white people are very aware that by black people and non-white people existing, they can be um, removed from the planet Earth just by those people um, having babies and then those babies growing up and then those babies having babies and blah, blah you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I would like to add another thing to this that's not in the book. Um, he was the guy who, you know, did the evolution theory. Uh, his name is not in my head at the moment, but he's a, a white gentleman. Um, does anyone know his name? The, the survival of the fittest guy, what's that guy's name? Eugenics. Yeah, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. He said survival of the fittest. And um, that popped into my head today when um, Man Mary was we were talking about how cold it was. So we were walking to the park and I'm thinking, of, and Mary's telling me about like homeless people, how, how cold they must be. And um, I was very numb to that reality because in this system of racism and supremacy, if you are sleeping on the street, so I do, white. as a white person, not even as a white person, as anyone, anyone, like this, this system says survival of the fittest. So if you're not able to be warm enough, uh, that's your that's you not being able to survive. That's you not being fit. Therefore, um, you either die or do better. And then the kill or be killed mentality says, "Hey, if you're not white, it's either me or you, pal. I fear for my life. Um, he had a gun. Uh, symbolically, whenever a um, whenever a black man is killed and the perpetrator of the murder says they had a gun. Um, most of the time they do not have a gun, but what they do possess is a penis and that is the biological weapon that the white man or the white person is saying was the gun. That, that penis is literally their annihilation because it has the, you know, self reproducing uh, gene, DNA, it's able to reproduce itself. Like when you have sex with someone and you have a baby, you are reproducing your image. Um, so yeah, just wanted, to, just wanted to, to talk about that. Any any thoughts or any um, any responses to that? Yeah. You said a mouthful, man. You pretty, uh, much, you pretty much broke it down for us. You know, very very. Efficiently, uh, so many things were running through my head while you were talking. Uh, and I, one more thing to add: um, that that fear can also be projected. I mean, I just tell you guys a, a, a little story. So today I was playing, um, I was playing an online video game. I bless you, Terry Sneeze. I was playing a um, online video game, and um, this white guy thought I was a white person as well, you know. And he tells me, 
Um, come on, there was a white guy that thought you were white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can. So I because of, because he sees I'm white, I'm like talking to him like I'm a white person. I'm getting information out of. Oh. Right? <laughs> and then this guy tells me, "Come on, man. Come on, you're white. Doesn't your skin jump and crawl whenever you walk past a black person?" And I was like. You know what? It does, because I've been trained that way. But obviously, I'm lying. I, it does. When I see a black person, I don't feel I don't feel fear or anything. But this person was confiding in me that as a white person, whenever he walked past a black person, his skin jumped. That's what he said. He's from Romania, so he's from a place that barely has white people in it. And um, and he's talking about how he used to go hunting with his 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 dad and kill deer and all these things. Uh, and keep in mind, this is a uh, person living in Eastern Europe, I believe, Romania is an Eastern European country. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. This system yeah, right. of white supremacy has made me confused anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was actually an amazing experience, like, like witness that um, Trey basically using his voice to basically. basically um, um guys, guys this guy um talk, 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 break down white supremacy wow. but acting, acting as if he's a white man it was amazing trey was just like um but i feel like we're only trained this way because and he literally would quote dr francis chris wilson and the guy would agree with everything that he said he would be like um because when we see them it's an annihilation we see like and then i feel like the same thing about my dad when trey was like when my dad took me hunting like the 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 gun just it just, it just felt, felt like, like it was like a penis, penis you know. And the, the guy, guy was agreeing with everything he was saying. saying. I was like, "This is what it's gonna take. It's gonna take, take like, like white person voices to talk to European, European people, get them in a room, and they think it's only them two, and actually break it down to them through everyday conversation." It was quite fascinating, actually. <laughs> it should keep. I feel like it should keep it going. The guy, the guy was able to share so much, so much. there was no defense because he thought he was talking to the other white person. So he just shared everything that was on his mind. And I feel like they made a great friend today. Despite he was very surprised to see you when he finally does see you, but I think he made a great friend today. I don't think he ever will be seeing me throughout his life. You don't know. I feel like he changed his life, you know? You guys are echoing again. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, just just right quick, um, you know, to like peel back the layer all the way back to when those albinos were driven from Africa, and then for for obvious two reasons, because they couldn't handle the sun, and because they were being rejected as mutants as as uh, mistakes uh this picture just imagine the degree of desolation rejection if you've ever experienced rejection just imagine the degree of the feeling of rejection that you feel and then you're driven to an area where it's an host it's a hostile environment where the earth is not your friend it, the earth itself, the, the snow and the conditions, um, exposure just, you know, it, you, oftentimes you hear people talk about using the term, well, they die from exposure, you know, exposure just to the earth, just to nature. And then, you know, having to survive in that. And then, uh, uh, so so it's, it's just by reading this and, comparing what happened to them to the behavior of our children today. You know, you all know that the little 19 year old girl was murdered in front of my house a couple of three, you know, last month, you know, by her boyfriend, who was also, you know, you know, 19, 20 year, 20 year olds murdering each other, the kids murdering each other, right? And like Tracy mentioned, it's, it's, uh, reenactment of what what has been ingrained in us we're repeating it back but from a psychological standpoint if you have been if you, you your culture has been stripped from you your language has been stripped from you your 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 uh 
what is it, culture, language, and history, your identity is erased and then replaced with something that is the opposite of you. And so you aspire and you're, it's ingraining you through the schools, like you said, through the media, through generations after generation after generation of evil and being told you, you know, being told you useless, being deprived of any 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 resources to raise yourself up, and you turn that anger, you turn that, you turn it in on yourself, and so that's what happened to the white folks up in those caves, in those mountains, in, in the snow. You know, they had to eat each other. If they couldn't get an animal, they didn't have they didn't have vegetation up there. They, you know, they became savage. And so because they became savage and they realized what they were, they understood what it was going to be required to conquer the rest of the world. You know, because they experimented on themselves. I think that instructor that was here a couple of weeks ago mentioned that. They did all of these atrocities. They committed all of these atrocities on themselves before they went out to the rest of the world. And the, the, the best trick of, of it all is instead of them murdering us now, they don't murder us now. They get us to murder each other. Exactly. Hiring to be like them. And what do you say, Trey? Exactly. I, I, I totally agree with um, everything you said, Ben. And um, you reminded me of something that the um, white gentleman um, in Romania has said to me, he said, we came out of the caves angry. Yeah. And we have to be grateful that we're not like that. And we have to be grateful that we're not like that anymore. And I've been, he said that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, I was like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was really funny when he said that because like, I, I do believe that uh, even white people know their roots. You know, they, they know that they were chopping off heads and putting them on spikes. Mention black people, eating black people, raising black people. They, 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 they um, subconsciously, they have to know. Like, you cannot be, live in a society and be unaware of white supremacy. I firmly in my heart believe that every single white person on planet Earth is aware of white supremacy, white superiority, because like, they act it out like they they wake up and then they're they're superior to the person next to them, like it's it's, it's not a, a hard equation to to look at. Wow, uh, it's very good. But they're fish in water too, you know. I look at us as fish in water. It's like it's like the joke, you know. Two fish. I told you the joke. Two swim by the OG fish says to the young fish, "How's the water?" And they didn't. They looked at each other and ignored them. It was like, well, "What's yeah. the water?" Yeah. White people are in the water too. They don't, they've been in steeped in it so long, they don't even realize that they're white supremacists. Yeah. Some of them, a lot of most of them. Yeah. I but, felt, uh, Mary, go for it. Yeah, I felt um, the reason why I was so surprised when I um, overheard um, Trey's friend mentioning the caves is because. In my whole existence, I'm about to be 30 and I've never heard any white person ever talk about like caves at all, unless I'm watching it in a movie. Like in terms of conversation, that's that level of vulnerability has never been experienced. And I felt like the second because he felt comfortable thinking that Trey was white, like maybe this is a conversation that they do have amongst themselves about we need we we're not ever gonna go go back there. So we need to do everything to make to make sure that we don't do that and like work hard or whatever way they envision working hard, whether that be suppressing the people to make sure that they're not ran into the mountains. I feel like it kind of makes sense. It doesn't, but it makes sense in terms of like the global sense of colonization, wanting to be everywhere else and, not, and disassociating completely from um, caves or mountains or that kind of, um, yeah. I found that very um, interesting because it was the first time I thought, I, I think I've heard a white person be that vulnerable and touching on what um, um, you had said, Ben and Tracy, also in terms of us Black people doing it to ourselves, 
in mentioning of um, what we had, the passages we had read, that statement in particular where it says, where is it? Evil and it is the fling of the... It's a statement of saying that, um, yes, sorry, Tubu is um, in the north and the Tubu means precisely the evil that confuses men until they sin. I feel like confusing us so much, confusing the black community or the black diaspora, the African diaspora so much so that we turn it onto ourselves. I think that is a sin to, to do to your own fellow man unjustly based on the fact that you can't do to anyone else. I feel like that's the confusion that they're talking about, um, confusing us so much so that we sit on ourselves, we turn away from, we don't see ourselves as the number one image. And the second you do, I think that's the biggest sin, first of all, taking away, um, taking away um, yourself as the, the, not self, but um, your people as the God and pertaining it to another race and legacy. And I feel like, of, of course, self-respect comes into that, but it makes sense that, like the Asian communities that don't seem to want to respect us as a black people because they, as, as much as they are to participants or in oppressions of white supremacy, they have a first come first serve basis of themselves. They would, a, a black shop owner has told me, she would notice that um, Asian customers do not come to her black owned store. Um, black people go everywhere, go to every store. Like um, it's an off license. So like any everyday trinkets, the top of your Oyster card. She said the only time that she notices Asian people come into her store is if the, the Asian store directly opposite is closed. That is, and she's been a, a business owner for 10 years. And after that observation it's like, we've, they've been practicing group economics. That's the biggest sin. We, we turn away from each other and look everywhere else. I feel like one of the biggest sin amongst ourselves. Yes. <clears throat> That is so true. I was um, just talking to someone about that, how we would go and spend somewhere else instead of trying to patronize with our own kind. And some reasons for that, if you go to another person's shop that says a different race, they are more courteous sometimes than a black one. When, you know, I've been into where I would go and patronize a different like an Indian or something and I would go to a black person and I would get the treatment they're more courteous at another at the other one and that kind of like turn you off why you don't want to spend with your all because I'd be like I love to spend if I find anything that's black on I go to it ask my kid I go to it I believe in but it's that treatment too we have to that we have to realize just because we have a little something we still have to be, you know, be courteous to others and, you know, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't get that clientele like that too. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And just remember too, you just made me think of something, you know. Uh, yeah, they, and that's just a, a, a example of like how White supremacy has trained everyone. White domination has trained everyone. Just self hate, you know. Just if it's if it's if you're uh, white, all right, you're all right. If you're yellow, you're mellow. If you're brown, stick around. But if you're black, get back, you know. So yeah, whenever you can, you can expect to be treated, you know, the worst when you're out and about the system, even by people who look like you because they've been yeah. trained. They've been trained in self-hate. That's how it's it's so sad. You know, you try and talk to them and lighten them and they look at you like you and lost your mind. You're crazy. Yeah. It's not going to be an easy one for you to get your brothers and sisters to understand. This is a hard path that you guys are threatening. You know that. Yeah, like, we all just have to remember what, and um, like, we should understand that we live in an insane society. And as Neely Fuller has said, that um, when criticizing the people around us, when criti criticizing the people, understand that in the system of racism and white supremacy, um, Black people and non-white people have been trained to be monsters and monstrosities, which are things that exhibit 
patterns of destructive behavior. You know, it's not constructive to be a monster or a monstrosity. You know, it's a it's a creation. We were created this way. We were created to kill, target black, white supremacy one on one. But how? How? That's what that's what the writer is telling us systematically how they created this monster. How, I mean, in detail and, and really crystal clear and really simply put, what they did was found out that the, the, the hate and the, the deep feelings of inadequacy that they have with their lack of melanin with their white skin, that seething hatred, in order for us to conquer the rest of the world, we are going to have to. Not too long ago, look around that corner somewhere. We, we're going to have to. We're going to have to teach everyone else to hate themselves. We're going to have. We're going to have to get them. We're going to have to strip them of their self-esteem strip them of their worthiness because that's where we're at. So in order, we have, we have to raise ourselves and the only way we can raise ourselves above them because we don't have the true, the true power is to destroy them and to just not destroy them physically, destroy you mentally, destroy you psychologically, destroy your self-esteem, your self-worth. And that's that's that you know that's a, a very successful, very uh, powerful tactic that they were able to use to get us to hate our own skin color. Forget about all the rest of the stuff that we hate. For them, it's all about the melanin. For them, their hate of their melanin to get them to hate their melanin, and that is an amazing thing, an amazing thing for someone that you can look right in their face and see they can't even go into the sun. The sun, they give yeah. everything life on earth. You can't have life without it. And we're looking at them saying, we want to be that. We want to yeah. be that. Then what you're saying is so, pro so profound. Yeah. I just want to reiterate something that you just said is, you said they made us hate our own melanin. The one thing that they cannot produce substantial amounts of And that which is closest to God, if not God. And I think at the end of the day, they know who God is right there. You too. That's God. That's God. I said, I see her right there, right? And so that's why they had to really promote. They really had to be sure. They didn't make that Jesus white with brown eyes and brunette. They didn't make him, you know, white with, with, with you know, a dirty blonde or, 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 or green eyes. They made sure he had to be the epitome, the absolute diametrically opposed opposite of God, of black. And flipped it on his head and it's worked over the millennia. That's why this lady was here trying to talk to me about Christianity. That's what took me so long coming back. I had to break it down for her. <laughs> you know? They did that to oppress you, to, 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 to enslave you, to control you. If your religion came with a sword to the throat, it should not be practiced. Mm -hmm. um, All great points mentioned um, to that, that just, just from, from that, um, that, that example, example you gave Lizzie. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I wanted to, I wanted also, to also make a comment on that, like the, in terms of the treatment that you talked about. And I feel like, of course, self-hate, it's been covered in terms of why we treat each other that way, but also why you get a, like a great treatment from other races is because I feel they are practicing the code of money over everything. So it's not like they're being kind to you. They're being kind to what you can do yeah, for their business. That. Yes, that's true. I understand that, but it's still- For us black people, we don't practice code. So. Or, you know. Trust to believe, I don't go back to them too much. I just go back and and I look for bargains too. I'm a very bargain shopper. <laughs> if your prices is too high, I won't see you. I will go, you know. I love my people. I do, I do a lot of black um, stores and everything, so don't yes. get it wrong. 
But it's just how, like I say, our people, when they have a little something, they forget where they come from. Mm. And that's because of, of course, the lack of exposure to money from an early age. So that you, they get that brand new feeling and because they're installed with all these false values, it will go in gold chains, it'll go in a, a, a Jeep Lexus car, they can't talk to nobody no more. Like they, they just do the assumed mentality. Whereas if we were practicing code, we'll be kind to everybody who walks into our store because we know that's money, if you know what yeah. I mean. So we're, we're still in that confused realm, which is why we constantly sin on ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so thanks everyone for being so, um, sharing your information. You know, Confucian says, share all that you can. The more information you share, the better. Um, that's how problems get solved. And at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is end white supremacy. That's all we're trying to do is end this system. So our, um, so our, our, our cousins and our aunties and our nephews and our fathers and mothers and daughters and sons, so all these people can live in a world that um, maybe isn't, you know, dominated by monsters, you know. Yeah, maybe uh, they won't have to hear about genocide, you know, every other week. Yeah. I really love this chapter because, um, like, it reminds me that, like, I grew up watching, like, TV movies that, like, these characters, like, who who want to, like, you know, Dr. Evil wants to take over the world. Like, all these, like, evil, um, like, villains want to take over the world, world domination. I'm like, this is so dumb. I know I can do this shit. Like, why are you trying to take over the world? That's such a dumb girl, a dumb plan, you know? And then I... I learned, I learned more about reality and what's going on. And then not only that, you know, that it's been done, it's happening right now. So I think it's really interesting that um, world domination is, is the concern of white folk, you know, control, domination, expansion, refinement at the cost of black bodies, non-white bodies, white survival, black destruction, um, I want to share my screen. Let's go ahead and read page 233 together. It's such a wonderful book of information. And in my notes, um, I have noted down, but it's just there's not one part to take away from it. I'd rather just read the whole thing with you guys. Just to make sure that um, this information is um, being, um, you know, given to you guys' um, nervous system and is in you guys' uh, DNA for all of eternity. So, share my screen. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, can you guys see the screen? No, not yet. Yeah, no? All right. Um, we're going to be reading up to the. Love you, Shadow. Share what? What did I say? What? This is what I'm. This is what people are seeing. Why are you guys seeing that? Maybe it's supposed to change. Um, yeah. All right. I don't know why I did that. I'm looking at some totally different on my screen. Um, so we're going to be reading up to the the, the, the top half of two two four. Um, so whoever reads the last paragraph, just make sure you read to the next page and finish the paragraph. Um, let me go ahead and start. This page is all about melanin and the lack of melanin and evil and just it's just it's a uh, a very delicious amount of information. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, now I'll go ahead and start. Once again, this is chapter nineteen, neurochemical basis for evil. Chapter nineteen of Isaac. Okay, let me show you. Just how it was being seen. Great. If people are going to follow it from here, it's going to be hard to read all of that. Uh, I don't know. It's like that. I can, that's, that's not what I'm seeing on my screen. Can you can you guys see the photo? Well, most people have the book. Um, like everyone has the book, actually. Ask if they can see the book. Are you starting from 15 years ago? Yes. OK, I'll start, I'll start while you get it adjusted. Uh, oh, you got it right there. Go ahead. 
Yeah, so can you guys see this? Is this is this mice frame for you guys? from 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's terrible. Um, Let's see this. That's what we're, we're reading, that page. Yeah. All right. Um, this is way longer than I anticipated. Um, sorry about that. Um, 15 years ago, in a paper entitled Blacks, Hypertension and the Active Skin Melaconite. Journal Urban Health, 1975. I posited melanin, among other things, as a possible neurotransmitter in the skin, melaconites, as the foundation of the sixth sense, the basis for knowledge of the unseen, including a deeper knowledge of bad. I explained that if the melaconites were sense receptors and melanin was a neurotransmitter, then the dark, the darker skin, the darker the skin, the higher the levels of hypertension is found. Primarily, this is true because people with darker skins are more sensitive to the energy currents around them. If those energy currents are stressful, they will be more stressed, increasing levels of hypertension. In 1987, at the first Melanin Conference, I discussed the crest theory of the George Washington Carver phenomenon, suggesting that the skin melaconites, melan, anyway, of this very black skin scientist, high level concentration of melanin skin pigment enabled him to communicate with the energy frequencies emanating from plants. Thus, he was able to learn their secrets and purposes. No. Um, it had long since, made right. since my 1972 presentation on the they, neurochemical they, basis they, for they, soul, the neurochemical basis of evil has periodically come to mind, begging that I outline my thoughts on evil as the antithesis of soul. I relate soul in order spiritually and the affirmation of life. I equate evil with chaos and destruction, especially the destruction of life. The word evil, when spelled backwards, is live. The discussion of evil takes on even more significant proportions in light of this increasing number of persons in this society who openly are proclaiming themselves to be worshipers of the devil, devil being the arch doer of evil. In contrast to worshiping God, or in contrast to worshiping God, reportedly, these persons participate in the ritual murder of human beings. The concept of evil is not at all unusual in religious and philosophical discourse. Could you scroll a little bit higher up? Oh, sorry, yeah. The, yeah. Also, evil has um, been a frequent subsequent for literary, for literary exploration. The novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville is an example of the symbolic um, discussion of evil in classical American literature. Evil is approached less often in the natural sciences, including modern medicine. However, psychiatry is the one branch of um, modern medicine that has major attendancy. Yes, I can come off. No, I'm just gonna. Maybe ascendance in both religion and philosophy, and thus the topic of evil has found discussants who consider themselves scientific and scientific, scientists and scientific. Um, to read the last paragraph. Okay. Oh, thanks so much, everyone who so read. Much. Um, so, um, so, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, on that page. 
Uh, I'll go by just saying that um, I think it's amazing like what melanin does and how melanin directly influences uh, what you can perceive and what you could take on. Um, for example, uh, George Washington well, George Washington Carver was able to literally communicate with plants. Um, they would tell him um, what plants they were. The plants would tell him what they were made for, uh, what they could help him with. And um, he was able to communicate with the, the plants because of the melanin in his skin being able to energetically um, pick up messages that were being emitted from the the plants. What I what I love the most about um, what we just read there was this was of course um, the breakdown of melanin and its use and the fact that um, she meant she had gone to the melanin conference. I felt like that was an amazing achievement for a black woman to do. Um, yeah, so kudos to Dr. Francis Chris Watson for being like a black woman in a predominantly white space talking about melanin. Um, also, um, the, the sentences of live being evil backwards or evil being live, live backwards. And um, of, this is something I used to hear as a child a lot and um, in, in my primary school and also um, live is the devil backwards. So for me, it just kind of just pertained to growing up, it made me think if I want to like have like an amazing life, I have to basically be evil or selfish or a bad person. If I want to live a life, that's the way that they sold living to be, if you know what I mean. And um, even that statement, you only live once, like that was supposed to like make our generations a bit more reckless but I also think it it was like basically don't think twice about the things you want to do and of course that's not not applying morals to your thinking lessens your spirit in a sense because you're just agreeing to anything and which puts the body at dis-ease because there's certain things that later on traumatically you look back and yeah so it's always good to analyze and take repentance and and deal, just build it just um constantly focus on the choices that we make but that that mentality of living kind of tells you to just go for it sort of thing so it kept, I, I see the relationship there in that sense that was amazing how she, she you know she uh really clearly put that evil is the antithesis of the soul <laughs> So the soul, which is really one with creation, right? One with God. Even Jesus told his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So it's the it's like it's like the God within us, the good within us, right? The opposite of the good within us is the evil with on the outside of us. Um, you know, the, uh, and that's, that's the fragmentation that she's talking about. You know, the beauty and the power of the inner self, um, the inner life, uh, the inner intelligence that's, that's not really tangible. You can't you can't touch courage. You know, you can't you can't you can't touch honesty and truth and these principles that are required to have civilization. They're invisible. They go into eternity. That's coming from the in, that's the inside world. That's the inside self. You know, uh, uh, the outside self is money, property and prestige, power, you know the physical manifestations of what's going on on the inside of you. So if you have pure evil going on on the inside of you, then your, your God, your whole world, everything that is important to you is on the outside, is physical, 
it's money. It's, it's you know, Neely Fuller talks about it. It's, it's also uh, really, really clarified. We got to run through that maybe netter, man. That that's when you really start to start to really see the distinction between white external physical no soul no spirit <laughs> no god and the black pure spirit the black beauty the black god you know they want you to see that as evil black as evil black as and put so they not only not See, they did, they did, this trick didn't work by them building themselves up only, right? They had to build themselves up to this super ego thing that we talked about and then tear down the rest of the world. Make the rest of the world, everybody else, second world, third world, these terms they use, you know, that we use and we, we they get ingrained. Bring me, up. Bring me a juice. And they ingrain, ingrain this shit in our head. And now we think we're third we're third class citizens. <laughs> so anyway, I can I can ramble on, but that's what I thought about. Uh, I agree. I agree. Mean, so I said, right at uh, juice. Um, so I want to go ahead and go to page two, three, four and read a bit and then talk about this. So for the ant, the greatest evil consists of killing ants. For the human being, the greatest evil cons consists of the obsessional, degrading, and killing other human beings. All lesser evils are simply added to this, i.e. destruction of other life forms, destruction of the planet, and destruction that extends beyond planet Earth. With evil so defined, clearly there is an overwhelming atmosphere of evil in the world. In fact, the entire planet exists in an atmosphere of degradation and murder. To ignore this evidence of evil, obsession with mass killings, mass killings and death, is only to participate in the establishment and the maintenance of this reality. In fact, in, a, in effect, to participate in evil. On the other hand, to adjust the obsession with mass death and the, degrad the degradation of human life and help us encounter it is to affirm the dignity of human beings and the universe. So it is not uh, human nature to kill for sport. Uh, it's not human nature to kill other humans. Um, I do not believe these things. and. Um, during my conversation with the, the guy, the white guy online, he said that everyone is born with these biases. People are just born biases. We're supposed to do these things. I'm like, you think people are born with biases? Biases means racism. Like, you think people are born racist? And um, I told him how uh, you're right, but only for white people. Black people are not born racist. That's why you can get a bunch of white babies and show them images of black people and they'll already know not to trust them. They already know not to be not to perceive them as being beautiful or, or attractive. They already know to stay away. Black babies like all the pictures you show them, white and black people. They're they're fine with everybody. You know, so yeah, biases are not natural to melanated people, to non whites and black people, but to be biased is probably the norm for white people. I think white people um, exist from a standpoint where everything that's not them is hostile to them. Nature is hostile. People who live in nature are hostile. Um, people who live with nature are, are uncivilized savages. Um, that's, that's what they, that's, that's the way what they use. And, um, yeah, and, um, evil, this whole, just being idle while you watch evil happen. It's the same thing as participating in evil because for myself, I like to be honest. I tell people, hey, how you doing? I'm doing as good as I can be doing, um, but I'm also like, you know, under constant attack. I'm black. People keep thinking I'm a threat. People keep thinking uh, I'm, 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 I'm a rob them because I have been classified as a 
criminal because of my black skin. Um, like it's harder for me to like make it to certain places because of my black skin. All these things. I had to ask for this. I just I'm living this life, and um, I'm highly, highly targeted as a black person. I hop in a car. I'm worried about getting pulled over and getting murdered. You know, I hop in my friend's car. And I'm worried about the same thing. All right. So um, I like to be honest, and um, I think we all should be honest about what's happening. I'm so glad that um, Dr. Francis Prince Wilson was honest about what was happening. Is there uh, any, any um, anyone, anyone have anything to say about that part? I really love the the um, ant metaphor. It's not, it's not even a metaphor. It's just a shoot ants don't really kill other ants, you know, for sport at least. If not, I was, if not, we keep pushing. So, um, on page two thirty-six, uh, I wanted to talk about the of the well. So. If you look at uh, contemporary, uh, if you look at modern society in the news, you, you, you'll see like whenever there's a story about an albino raccoon, an albino rabbit, albino anything, like white media loves it so much because they are seeing symbolic representations of themselves. Um, white people are albinos, white people lack the proper amounts of melanin therefore creating skin that is, you know, has been classified as white. Some of them even have blue eyes, which is like just even further showing the lack of melanin. So, and Moby Dick, like it's all about this, uh, this, um, this well that's being chased by a, a white crippled, uh, crippled um, captain. Hold on, let's see. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read. Uh, I, I think I can just skip that and go to the the chapter at the, the end of this page because this is pretty much the part I want to decode. So. No, are, excuse me. I yeah. are we on two thirty six? Yeah. Okay. Um. You guys have been saving about that part? Uh, the one, the little insert right here about those of us who are Caucasian seem to have, well, actually, I don't want to hear, I'm talking, they talking about introspection and yet another one deserving significant scientific event. And that right there, I agree with right there. Because it's easier, it seems like it's easier for a person of color to kill another person of color than for a white person to kill a you know a one of them their own and that needs to find but it comes it, uh, it goes back to the self-hate that the scheme the jim crow syndrome that black people have in themselves so that's all right I understand it and um also, yeah, yeah I th thanks for sharing that you got a really good point and just um you said reminded me to could read this part also um, he's, um, he concludes war today is at least as much a matter of national pride as a racial pride. So um, I, I, I interpret this as saying, hey, like war right now is not like, oh, you're invading my country. Uh, I have to stop you from terrorizing my country. War right now basically is white supremacy, like uh, white people sending soldiers to different countries as a act of racial pride because by eliminating these uh, people in these countries, you are showing white supremacy, you are maintaining white supremacy, you're causing fear, you're depopulating the planet. You're doing all these things that I think um, showcases, like, you know, what, what, the, what the writer said national pride and racial pride, the same, they're the same thing. 
But I think for reading that part, I definitely agree. Um, so let's talk about the whiteness of the well. I'm not going to read this really quickly on page 236. What this is um, from the book um, Moby Dick. Um, what the white well was to Ahab has been hinted, but at times he was to me as yet remains unsaid. Aside from those more obvious considerations, touching Moby Dick, which cannot be occasionally awakened in any man's soul, some alarm, there was another thought, or rather vague nameless horror concerning him, which at times by its intensity completely overpowered all the rest, and yet so mystical and well nigh ineffable was it that I almost despair of putting it in a comprehensible form. It was the whiteness of the well that above all things upon me. But how can I hope to explain Yet for all these accumulated associations with whatever it is sweet and honorable and sublime, there yet works an elusive something and the innermost idea of this heat. What strikes more of a panic than the soul that that redness which affrights in blood, that ghastly whiteness it is which imparts such an aberrant mildness, even more loathsome than terrific. To the dumb gloating of their aspects, so, so that not the fierce fanged tiger and his erotic coat can stagger courage as the white shrouded bear or shark. So, um, like most white things, this is very, very, um, like in a way, very abstract. Um, but what stands out to me is his, his a fascination with the whiteness of the world, but also him being repulsed by it. And this shows to me um, that the writer of this book is very aware of his alienation. He's, a, he's alienated from himself. The main character of this book is a white person who's crippled. Um, basically, he's a mutant. And white people are, you know, scientifically, if, if scientifically explained, those who have genetic uh, deficiencies or in, in, inadequate genes are also consider mutants, so um, yeah, just just uh, keep that in mind. Um, I also I also want to just um, continue on more of the readings by uh, in um, this book, the Moby Dick. What is it that in the albino man so peculiarly repels and often shocks the eye, as that sometimes he is loathed by his own kith and kin. It is that it is that whiteness which invests him, a thing expressed expressed by the name he bears. The albino is all well made as other men, has no substantial deformity, and yet this mere aspect of all pervading whiteness makes him more strangely hideous than the ugliest abortion. Why should this be? So wow. this is just a lot of um a lot of information that this writer is giving us on how he feels about himself and how he feels about whiteness, consciously or subconsciously, I think this information is very valid. Yeah. And um, just to conclude, just to conclude um, this, this bit, I really love Dr. Francis's uh, interpretation of what this means. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, Meville's Captain Ahab, keep in mind, Captain Ahab is the uh, main character in Moby Dick. Captain Ahab sees the white well as all evil of which he is in pursuit. In a letter to Nathan, to Nathaniel Hawthorne, Meville referred to Moby Dick as a wicked book. My own interpretation of the symbolism of this novel, which has been described as the greatest of all American novels, is that the crippled white Captain Ahab represents the mutant global afflicted with albinism whiteness. The white whale is symbolic of racism, white supremacy, the major pursuit of the global white collective, the evil destructive goal of the global white collective, 
this furious evil pursuit of Moby Dick ends in a disaster for all, a deadly end in which the white ship captain and all of his crew, whites and non-whites alike, are destroyed. Yet one survived to tell the tale, foretelling the end of white supremacy as a specified power dynamic. So yeah, um, it's no, it's, it's not surprising that this novel can contain symbolism of albinism and white supremacy. And um, I also want to add that this was written, you know, like after, written before the um, Civil War, when there was heightened tensions between black people and white people, meaning that black people were tired of being owned by white, by white people. Um, so yeah, what do you, how do you interpret that? What do you guys think about that? What's, what's your thoughts? For me, oh, Ben's speaking. Ben's mute, muted Ben, but um, I'll just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, it was very much, it just makes sense as to why it was a number one book, because I can imagine a lot of white people not wanting or not being able to like talk, express themselves fully or even understand the feelings that they're feeling. But the, the way that um, on a metaphoric level, if they can pick it up um, symbol, symbolically, um, the writer very much is asking the question for themselves. Like I, I feel, I feel for the writer. Like at least they were able to express themselves in a way that um, mapped out um, white supremacy and and showed showcased this downfall through the metaphor of the the whale and the, it's the constant pursuit of this um, um, cap this um, captain that was like possessedly um, fixated on the whale. It, just, it, it makes so much sense, and I. I I appreciate the fact that it exists for white people to basically it, it lets me know that in some form of compassion or in some form of their from from their that if not all destruction is birthed from their pain like they can actually reflect their alien uh, re reflect on their alienation and create such um some such forms of art for other people to interpret their own understanding of self Well said, Mary. Well said. That's what I was going to say. That was like profound. You, you know, you two are geniuses. I think you already know that. And uh, thank you, Tracy, for producing these geniuses. These geniuses. <laughs> I mean, the way you are decoding this and breaking this down is 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 is, is, is not short of genius. You know. <laughs> Um, what I, what it made me think about was how this pandemic, you know, right parallel at the same time with the pandemic, uh, which is, which is a huge threat to white power, right? It's right, right, right parallel with it is the black power movement. And which was which was spawned by uh, the murder of a black man and a, a string of murders that brought attention to all of the murders that have been happening, and and it just it just I don't know you know it's just this lady is it just just phenomenal to to be able to connect the crises and the threat to society to the upheaval of white supremacy. And how, how it's directly connected, and so it's, it's it's really it's really current, you know that we really have to be diligent right now. Like I said, you know, I went and got, you know, I went to go get some more ammo for my Glock, you know, <laughs> and I got my I got my my shot <laughs> loaded, you know. You right. have your permit. <laughs> as long as you have your permit for this type of stuff, which we know the Glock is well, it could be legal, but anyway, as long as you have your permit, it's okay. But if you don't get your permit, don't be another brother washed up for nothing. Well, if I if I do something, I'm taking my I'm taking my grandfather's Saturday night special. <laughs> the 38 revolver. If you can't get it got done with that. You know, it can't be done. It, 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 you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You are, you're in over your head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just get your permit. 
because everyone is getting them now. I'm going to go get me one just because these people are crazy. They're, they're, you do not know what's going to happen nowadays. Well, I think we can predict um, people will continue to kill people for fun nowadays under the system of white supremacy. But that's just so senseless. That's why it's up to you guys to spread the word. Enlighten some. All this, you're not going to get a handful. Be happy if you get one. That one can lead to another one. Spread it. I, I agree. Um, so let's let's go ahead and um, before we move on to closing comments, please have a volunteer to read the uh, final paragraph on page two three eight. Whoever wants to go ahead and read that thing in its entirety, one of my favorite paragraphs ever written in the human like human language of English. Wow! Uh, yeah. Let me read that. Yeah, go for it. Melville's linkage of evil and dread with the condition of albinism parallels my own thesis that the absence of the neuropeptide, neuropeptide melanin, the absence of this black pigment in the skin and other aspects of the nervous system critically impairs the depth sensitivity of the nervous system and the ability to tune in to the total spectrum of energy frequencies in the universe. This deficiency of sensory awareness sets the stage for the absence of harmony, the chaos and destruction, which is evil. Thus, the injustice and evil of white supremacy not only has its foundation in the numerical minority status of the global white population and its genetically recessive, recessive status in terms of melanin pigment protect, production but the very absence of melanin in the nervous system in significant degrees, decreasing sensory input and thus sensitivity. It is an additional contrib contributing factor in the problem of white supremacy injustice. White supremacy is the greatest known evil on earth. Likewise, racism, white supremacy is the unified force field that encompasses all of the lesser evils we now recognize. Indeed, if the absence of melanin obstructs the nervous system's ability to tune into the total spectrum of frequencies in the universe, rendering those lacking melanin incapable of acting in harmony with those frequencies, then it becomes incumbent upon those possessing melanin to counteract evil. Wow. Great, great knowledge, pure knowledge. Wow. Before we do um, closing comments, I, I wanted to read something and get you guys' opinion on it, if possible. Uh, is that in the context of what we've been talking about? Yeah, so it's, it's from it's literally from um, this chapter. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, so um, it says uh, this is from two thirty four. With evil, and it actually goes into what Ben just read too. No. Nisha, bring me that. I got a fly in here. Huh? Bring me that back thing, that tennis thing. All right, so from 234. With okay. evil so defined, clear, clearly it's there fly. is an overwhelming atmosphere of evil in the world. In now, fact, the entire planet exists in, a bunch. in an atmosphere of degradation and murder. To ignore oh, this yes. evidence of evil, this obsession with mass killing and death is only to participate in the establishment and maintenance of its reality. In effect, to participate in evil. Do do we do we do we think this is accurate? Do we think um there can be no bystanders in this and what's going on on planet Earth? You either are working with it or you're working against it. Agree. Yeah, me, me, yeah, me, I, I have read that and we talked about that a bit. Maybe. Yeah, I remember, I remember, but I didn't get that. I didn't get to share my insight, but I remember you oh, yeah. reading it. Yeah, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, or even today, like when I was having a conversation with the um the uh, the, the white uh person online, 
uh, I was telling him that like this racism uh, it uh, influences all aspects of our, our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. And um, if you are not actively speaking out against it or, or um, letting it be known that it's a real thing, you are definitely complacent and participating in it. Like this is not like a um, a bystander opportunity. You can't be a bystander in this. If you're a bystander, that means. Um, well, let me let me go back. If you are white and you are a bystander, you are a white supremacist and you are enjoying the benefits of white supremacy, you are enjoying your superiority, you are enjoying your white power, you are enjoying your immense freedom, you are enjoying your access to wealth, you are enjoying all those things. If you are black and a bystander, you are a victim of white supremacy and you are either okay with being a uh, subhuman, you are okay with being um, a Negro, a nigga, or whatever you want to, whatever term you want to slap on your forehead, you're okay with that. You're okay with um, having kids that are like, you know, basically uh, there's no difference between bucks and um, buffalo to be hunted. Um, you are okay with, um, like like you're the you're okay with um, just having very, very low outcomes and like not being able to succeed as easier as um, now as white people do. You're just okay with that. So if you're a bystander, you're either, for, you're either with it or against it. So bystanders are with white supremacy. Um, counter races are against white supremacy. And uh, anti racist I don't really, I don't know what anti racist is. I don't know what the anti-racist is. I don't know what they do. Um, I do know counter-racist. Just, just hate it as an emotion? Uh, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, anyone want to ask the last questions before we can move to close the conversation? Yeah, I um, totally agree with the statements that we read. And um, I, I saw the other day, it was a little quote that said, um, all it takes for racism to prevail is for good people to do nothing. And of that good people, I took under the context of more, more so um, um, a, a people of the African diaspora, I took that more so as black people. I feel like um, ignorant people also um, be, be staying ill-informed or wanting to stay ill-informed in a sense, I'd say is a, is a letting racism prevail in a sense is what racism calls for. It, it really wants us to do that and stay distracted. Um, yeah, so I agree. That's why it really is like really inspirational to see folks here, you know, dedicated, attempting to be dedicated to learning about the problem so they come up with solutions. Well, I did, well, I would love to to to, to hear um um, I, how how can we reach gay like gay bangers? Like how can we get them to be to to become counter racist to effectively counter white supremacy and racism? Do the same thing that the white man did to us. You know, you know, you know. They 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 didn't just you know we, we want to build we want to build their self esteem. You know, we, we know that we want to build their self esteem. We want to build their self worth and all of that. But unfortunately, what the white man did was they overbuilt their self-esteem, put themselves on a pedestal, and then dehumanized everybody else. So what we need to do is tell the truth, tell them the truth. Just keep really reiterate in them that they we're we're what you were what you've been saying all along, Swa, is that we're prisoners of war. You know, really explain to them. Look, look, look. You, 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 you're a prisoner of war. Uh, uh, I know it's hard. This is hard. This is it's hard for me to even articulate it to get it out. But I was thinking about it. That's why I jumped right in because I was exactly what I was thinking about when you asked. It, is that we have to really, really tear this white demon down and bury him and burn him and disintegrate his ass. And I mean verbally and psychologically to the gangbang. We got to let them know that what evil is, how evil they are. And you're aspiring to be something evil. 
not something beautiful that you really are. I know that's a hard, it's a hard order. It's a hard order. But I think that's the start is to really, really point out the evil of the white man to make them feel better about themselves because that's what they did to us. They dehumanized us. There was rumors that we had tails. And, you know, we're subhuman. We have yep. to flip the script and make them uh, subhuman. That's why I know. When this, is, when this coronavirus is all over and when I go back to different things that I used to go to, you come with me, I introduce you to some of the little homies, you just talk to them. And out of all, somebody out of them will understand that, pass it on like that. You just have to talk to them. In a normal way, not just putting yourself, pushing it on them, just talk to them. Uh, uh, One, pass it on, and then it goes on to another. That's how it's a chain reaction. Yep. Like I say, you may speak to 20 people. If one person out of that 20 gets the message, you've done a good job. Yeah. And um, I wanted to uh, give an answer to Swaz's question. So um, there's in gang culture, there there's always like a uh, a top dog, either uh, still alive or um, incarcerated or whatever. There's always like someone who's like an OG, and um, a lot of um, Los Angeles house and crips look up to Monster Monster Cody. I think he's still alive, and um, he went he went to uh, he was a uh, he wrote the book Monster about um, his activities being a crip. And um, he killed a bunch of people, robbed a bunch of people, the whole thing. And uh, he he went to prison, and then in prison he was in solitary solitary confinement for his entire prison sentence. And then uh, he changed his name from uh, from Cody to uh, like um, I forget I can't really say it, but something you should hear. And then like he went back to the hood to try to like unify gangs and stop, get them to stop doing what he's doing but they already um look up to him and, and um are doing the stuff that he did in his book he his book only made them worse so i think like uh, reaching out to like gang leaders who are out the gang and like you know trying to get their support and then basically um using their platform to like you know try to reach the, the people who are who already look up to them you know what i mean it takes research and like Communicating with people who may not be accessible, but that, that's one way to get to the the, the gang members is talking to. Because you know how he looked up at Tucky Williams, and uh, Tucky Williams probably looked at somebody else. So it's like a going down a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always the big homie and little homie syndrome. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I, I just wanted to get the elders um insight to that. Thanks. I 100% agree. Um, so, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Let's go ahead and move towards closing comments. So now is your chance to give anything that you want to read and get off your chest about the chapter. Now is your time. Um, yeah, one of my um, not that it matters, but one of my favorite chapter is very important chapter um the our black skin melanin is very powerful substance that white people have been like studying forever since they encountered it and um yeah but at the same time they have been training people to to, to hate this melanin and that in itself is very evil so um, chapter 19, everyone should read this if they want, if they, you know, want to understand what evil truly is, you know, like what evil really is. It's just, you can look around it and see it all the time, but where does it come from? Racist man, racist woman, collectively, white supremacists. Very well put. Yeah. For my closing comments, I'd like to read the question that, that's up front. Sorry? Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to read the, um, the questions that Dr. Francis Chris Wilson um, had put up in terms of the, okay, before there can be an effective struggle against evil, she even uses the term struggle, which lets us know that it's a, it's a journey. 
the following questions must be answered. What are the dynamic conditions in a society or culture that would stimulate such activity as, as announced as devil worship? Was that this question? Yeah, well, that would be, that would stimulate such activity as announced as devil worship. That's question one. What are the dynamics in a society and culture wherein increasing numbers of black males are being killed daily, yearly at epidemic levels? What are the dynamics? Okay, what are the dynamics in a society for that? What are the exact um, causation dynamics in a society and culture wherein the greatest percentage of its resources are used in the development and um, production of instruments of death and destruction? like making mass um, nuclear weapons, mass um, wars that aid in genocide, making wars and distribute, making guns and distributing them in communities so civil wars can occur. Yeah, um, what are the exact dynamic conditions in a power system or culture within, wherein 50 million people can be destroyed in the course of a slave trade as on the continent of Africa? What are the exact dynamics, dynamic conditions in the power system or culture wherein six million Semites of um, the Jewish religion can be destroyed deliberately or 20 million people killed in the course of war, such as in the Soviet Union during World War um, II? Now, question number six, what are the dynamics in a society and culture in which hundreds of thousands or possibly millions are doomed to die of infectious of infection with a virus that um, increase in numbers are concluding, are concluding was deliberately man-made. So that's Ebola, that is um, most um, most diseases that um, have come, cholera, Every I feel like there's a simplex and it's just constantly made in the lab until they see how much um, it affects the melanated population. So that's always the aim. Yeah. yeah, so I feel like these questions are highly important to like just get out there and for us to like start being aware of and trying to answer and these questions are questions that we should be trying to answer on a daily basis or at least be in our collective consciousness so we can, so nothing surprises us like um, COVID coming about. This would be, the second that we heard of COVID based on histor historical events, we should we should already be like, okay, so this is that move. How We should already have our counter ready because we understand that um, biological warfare is something that is done on, on, onto us. Nothing should take us by surprise now. The, these two pages might be the two most important pages in the book. The one you just read, that page you just read, Mary, and the page you just, because that connects the two, that, that's the problem and the solution right there. Um, and it points out the diagnosis as, as a psychiatrist, she's diagnosing these, these sick people. That's what this book is. It's, 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 it's the profile of a sick mind. And, and I just wanna reiterate what you just read, this powerful paragraph at the end. Um, um, Just about the nervous system, you know, the sensitivity of the nervous system and the in a, and the ability to tune into total spectrum of energy frequencies in the universe. This deficiency of sensory awareness sets the stage for the absence of harmony, the chaos and destruction, which is evil. That's that 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 says that says it all. You know, they do not have the depth. It it, it um. Um, the very absence of melanin in the nervous system in significant degrees decreases the sensory input um, well we know we know what she's saying we all, we all know what she's saying you know you know you can't you know my father used to say you know I, I was in the streets some, some part of my life you know uh Early, early in life, I haven't always been the model citizen that I am today, uh, you know, and and I would be trying to do something, 
And my father told me one time, he said, he said, well, you can't get butter from a duck. That's some old country stuff, right? You can't, if they don't have it, and because they don't have it, they're confused. They're suicidal. They're self-loathing, <laughs> you know? And so because I'm confused, See, if I'm the boss, I was always the boss on my jobs, right? If I'm a boss and I'm confused and I want to stay being the boss, I better confuse everybody else that's working under me. <laughs> so, so it makes it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to keep the guy off. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what I have for that, for the end of that. Um, my, wind down. my, uh, closing comments, um, I have a long thought. Once I realized, I realized what melanin was when I was a kid, um, uh, I was like, okay, so black people have melanin and black people do all these things, like they dance and rhythm. They like speak in tongues and they cry in church and all these things. I was like, interesting. And then I realized that white people didn't have money and that's why they look the way they, they look the way they do. And I was like, hmm, is there a correlation between like behavior patterns and melanin? And guess what I found out through reading the ISIS papers that there is 100 percent sure a direct um, a direct correlation between melanin and behavior patterns and lack of melanin and behavior patterns. That's why you've never really heard of a, like a, a black, um, a group of Africans, literally being another race of people off of the planet. Like you, we never, you won't hear of Africans going into to Spain and like making it so every Spanish person is dead, you know, it's gonna happen. You know, however, you see instances of black people going into Spain and giving them, uh, real. giving them uh, like civilization, license, and uh, just giving them knowledge, basically. And uh, yeah, so this chapter is a, a, a very visible difference between those who have melanin and those who not have who do not have melanin. That's my that's my takeaway and my closing comments. Yeah, uh, earlier, thanks for sharing that, Trey. Earlier, I, I misquoted um, Neely Fuller. It's very bad to do that. So I want to um, I want to fix that. And um, this is from the code book. And the question is, what is the correct thing to say when people criticize the general behavior of non-white people? Answer. Say during the existence of white supremacy, all non-white people are directly or indirectly taught, led, and or forced to behave in a manner of monsters and or monstrosities. The system of white supremacy is scientifically designed to produce only two types of behaviors in non-white people, the behavior of monster and monstrosities. The term monster applies to any greatly destructive behavior by non-white people who, for whatever reason, are subject to and are victims of white supremacy and who willfully and deliberately do major unjust harm to any person. The term monstrosity behavior applies to the general behavior of a non-white person who is subject to and or is a vi who is subject to and or is a victim of white supremacy and does not have the will and or the ability to end white supremacy racism. These terms explain that in birth, systematically trained and or forced to think, speak and act in the manner of monsters and or monstrosities. This is one of the basic requirements of racist man and racist woman, white supremacists collectively. So. 
microphone to clear that up. Yeah, thanks for uh, putting that up. Uh, thanks, everybody. Can I stop there?